Hi everybody. Today we're going to draw, sketch in the muscles of the pelvic limb. To begin with, we're going to draw the skeleton, which includes the hip bone and the femur. So we'll make sure and have the short end of the femur projecting beyond dorsal to the hip bone. Then we'll draw the tibia and fibula with the short end extending past the femur. Then we'll draw the tarsus and the digits as such. Now we're going to do this a little bit differently because we're also going to include the thoracic limb because I think it'll be make some sense when you look at these limbs and think about the nature of how they relate to one another. So let's redraw, let's do our thoracic limb again with the scapula, the humerus, the radius and ulna, and then the carpus and digits, etc. So now we're going to consider, as we look at the two limbs, thoracic and pelvic, now we're going to look at the joints and consider their flexor surface. So for the hip joint, the flexor surface is cranial. For the shoulder joint, the flexor surface is caudal. For the elbow joint, the flexor surface is cranial. For the stifle, the flexor surface is caudal. So you should already start to look at this back and forth between the thoracic and pelvic limb and start to note the mirror image nature of these structures. Down in the tarsal joints, the flexor surface is dorsal, and the flexor surface of the carpal joints in the thoracic limb is palmar. And the interdigital flexor surface for the interdigital joints and the metatarsal phalangeal joints is plantar, and the flexor surface for the interdigital joints of the thoracic limb and the metacarpal phalangeal joints is also palmar. So now we're going to begin to sketch in the muscles and to begin with we're going to sketch in the gluteal muscles and specifically we're sketching in the, the middle and deep gluteal and these are going from the flat bone or the hip bone to the short end of the lever here in the femur or the greater trochanter and these gluteal muscles are innervated by the cranial gluteal nerve. Now these are extensors of the hip joint. Now over here, and I think again this will help you realize the mirror nature of these limbs and the anatomy and biology in general, is in the thoracic limb we can draw a muscle that goes from the flat bone or scapula to the short end of the humerus and that would be the supraspinatus and that would be innervated by the suprascapular nerve and this would be an extensor of the shoulder joint. So these are both extensors. Um, moving on, we can draw another muscle that's innervated by the cranial gluteal nerve, and that would be the tensor fascia lata. It comes down in here and inserts in the fascia lata. This is going to be a flexor of the hip joint. Um, over here, we can draw another analog over here on the pelvic limb of the sartorius, and the sartorius goes from the hip bone down to the patella and kind of down in here to the tibia fibula area. And these two muscles, the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata, when they contract in the weightless limb, they act to flex the hip joint. The analogous muscles in the thoracic limb would be the teres major, which goes from the scapula down to the long end of the humerus, and the deltoideus, which comes across again from the scapula down into the long end, long end of the humerus here. These muscles, the deltoideus and the teres major, upon contraction, would flex the shoulder joint, and they are innervated by the axillary nerve. The sartorius is innervated by the saphenous nerve, which basically comes off of the femoral nerve. So continuing on in the pelvic limb, we can draw a muscle that spans from the hip bone down to the short end of the lever of the tibia fibula, and we can add a few other muscles that join that that originate from the femur, and they come down and insert on this short end of the lever of the tibia and fibula, and these would be 
muscles of the quadriceps femoris. So you have some that span two joints, some that just come from the long bone here and go to the sh short end of the lever of the tibia and fibula. These would act upon contraction to extend the stifle joint. Now we can go over to its analog here in the thoracic limb and we can draw a muscle that goes from the distal scapula to the olecranon and a few other muscles also come in from the proximal, caudal, etc. Humerus and they come into the olecranon and this would be the triceps and the triceps are innervated by the radial nerve. These muscles would extend the elbow joint. So you can see these are basically mirror images or analogs of each other. The quadriceps femoris are innervated by the femoral nerve. The triceps brachii are innervated by the radial nerve. Moving on, we can continue to draw some muscles. The biceps brachii comes from the distal scapula all the way down to the long end of the lever of the radius and ulna. And the contraction of this muscle would cause flexion of the elbow joint. So that is the biceps brachii, and that's innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. Its analog over on the pelvic limb would be the biceps femoris, which come from the ischiatic tuberosity and some of the um, tendons there. But they basically come down and they span the flexor surface of the stifle joint, so the biceps femoris, along with the semimembranosus and semitendinosus. These muscles are all innervated by the sciatic nerve. And continuing into the distal aspect of the limb, you can look at the muscles that originate from the distal femur and the, the cranial tibia fibula region, and they span the flexor surface of the tarsal joints and the extensor surface or dorsal aspect of the interdigital joints and metatarsal phalangeal joints. These would be the muscles that, upon contraction, flex the tarsal joints and extend the interdigital joints. And the innervation of these would be the common fibular nerve. So again, these, we call these in shorthand, we kind of call these uh, tarsal flexors and digital extensors. And again, these are innervated by the fibular nerve, the common fibular nerve. The analog over here would be the muscles that originate from the medial part, epicondylar area of basically the radius and ulna, and they come across the palmar aspect of the carpal joints and palmar aspect of the interdigital joints. And those would be the carpal and and digital flexors, and they are innervated by the median and ulnar nerve. So what the mirror image kind of drops off in the interdigital joints because of the turn of the front paw, but you still get a general idea of how these are related. Uh, moving on then, another muscle we can consider would be coming from the distal femur and the, the caudal uh, tibia fibula, and they come across plantar aspect of the tarsal joints and plantar aspect of the interdigital joints. And we would call these the tarsal extensors and interdigital flexors. And these are innervated by the tibial nerve. The analogous one over here would be off the lateral aspect of the epicondylar area of the humerus, and they come across the dorsal aspect of the carpal joints and interdigital joints. And these are the carpal and interdigital extensors, and they are innervated by the radial nerve. So again, you can kind of line these up and see how they match up. And a few other muscles we can comment on would be the adductor, which comes from the the adductor comes from the basically the hip and into the caudal aspect of the femur, and that is innervated by the obturator nerve, and it's really kind of hard to match that up with the muscle in the pelvic limb. And the sartorius would be, this, or the gracilis, excuse me, would be the same. The gracilis kind of spans along here and is a stifle flexor, and it's medial deep in there. But that would be analogous to, it's hard to make that analogous match to a muscle in 
the thoracic thoracic limb as that is also a flexor.